Hello and welcome to the hottest new game. What, what even is real? Today's topic is the island of Riel. I have recorded three completely different explanations for this term, which I will play in a random order that I will select now. Any of these three could be true and any of them could be false. There are eight possible combinations. Your job is to see if you can cut through the bull to find the milk of truth. Here we go. The Island of Rail is from classic literature. Let's take a moment to talk about narrators. You likely learned in school that the narrator of a story tends to be either first person or third person, and that third person comes in both limited and omniscient forms. And all of this is true as far as it goes, but there are actually a lot more variations. For example, there are stories with a second person narrator, but it is not used much. Here are the opening paragraphs for Stuart Onan's A Prayer for the Dying. You, the reader, are a character, but the narrator has to tell you what you did, what you think, and what you know and remember. Second person tends to sound and feel very awkward. First person is also not always simple. For example, William Faulkner's As I Lay Dying is told in multiple first persons. The characters take turns telling the story in first person, so each chapter marks a change in the narrator. The chapter titles tell you who is talking. It is an interesting idea, and it does have this amazing chapter in it. Overall, it is not really my style, and I cannot not recommend it strongly enough. But all of this is set up to talk about Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which uses what I'm calling nested first person. Chapters 9 through 16 are told in first person by the monster, detailing his experiences so far. But the monster is not the narrator. No, even though these chapters are being told by the monster, they are really being told by Victor Frankenstein, who is simply repeating word for word exactly what the monster said. Chapters 1 through 24 are told by Victor in the first person, including exactly what the monster said for eight chapters. That's amazing. I usually can't remember where I left my keys, and I leave them in the same place every day. So far, so good. And this isn't the first or last book to do something like this, but I'm not done. You see, Victor is not the narrator of the book. The narrator is Robert Walton. Before chapter one, we have letters one through four, which Robert, who is off exploring the world, writes to his sister. In these letters, among other things, he talks about a strange place he discovered, a cold and freezing island high in the Arctic Circle that doesn't appear on any map. Since it is unknown, he names it after their father, Rail Walton. It becomes the Island of Rail. On this frozen island, amid a storm, he sees a giant, inhuman figure running, chased by a sled. Robert follows, and after a time, finds a man who turns out to be Victor, alone, in the snow, nearly dead. He brings him back to his ship and nurses him back to life. Revived, Victor is at first hesitant to talk, but eventually opens up and tells the full story which Robert writes down in one of his letters. At the end of chapter 24, the book switches back into letters, even though the table of contents does not reflect it. So to summarize, in chapters 11 and 12, the monster tells a story about hiding, unnoticed in a small hovel next to a house where he stays for some time, spying on the family who lives there. Except the story is actually taking place in a cave at the top of the mountain where the monster is simply telling this story to Victor. Except, the story is in reality taking place on Robert Walton's ship, anchored next to the island of Raoul, where Victor is telling it to Robert, and he is relaying it to his sister in a letter. I'm not sure if I made this more or less confusing than the actual book. The island of Raoul has to do with baking. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Binging with Ogre, where this week we're taking a look at an unusual German dessert cake. It is usually made from scratch, but I'll be taking a few shortcuts. Start by making the cake. If you want to be traditional, be sure to make it chocolate. Try to do the fancy one-headed egg thing and make a mess. Mix using the smallest whisk you own. When that fails, pour in the bit of oil your daughter missed and use a proper tool for the job. Pour into two cupcake molds. These will become the island. Place a large bowl inside the pan and pour your batter around it. The void it leaves will house the lake. Weigh the bowl down to keep it from moving and then into the oven it goes. Wow. 
Walk away from your mess in disgust and realize later you left the camera rolling. Now to prepare the pomegranate. Use a knife to quarter it. Then use a bowl of water to separate the arils, which sink, from the white mesocarp, which floats. Lay the arils out to dry. Compress your trash so that you can put off being responsible and taking it out for a little while longer. Now for the lake. In a medium saucepan, combine milk and this powder. Add in the appropriate food coloring to create the lake water. This was traditionally done by adding blueberries, but the store was sold out. Now stir. And stir. Stir a lot. Until finally, it boils. Realize that you forgot to grease the bowl and revert to plan B. Spend a few seconds figuring out how to build the island. You'll change your mind later anyway. Pour in the lake. Careful not to burn your travel's arm too much in the process. Realize that the island floats and change your mind about how to build it. Now, let it all cool. Use icing to put the island back the way you tried to make it originally. Now add a sprinkling of arils. Spend a while fixing your island. Now do a poor job of icing the rest of the cake and add more arils. There you have it. The traditional dessert that hails from Rael, Germany. The island of Rail has to do with anatomy. Specifically, it has to do with the brain, a topic that has a lot of terms that I'm likely to stumble over, so let's have a jump cup counter. The human brain does a lot of things. Despite its importance, the brain is one of the least well understood parts of the body, which is unsurprising given how complex it is and how well hidden from casual observation. It takes fairly advanced technology to observe it working. For the sake of comparison, the idea of a neuron was first described in the 1830s, whereas blood cells were known about in the 1660s. The brain is fundamentally harder to study. I mean, yes, you could crack open the skull and, and poke things, and this absolutely did happen. And of course, you can dissect the brain after death. One person to do this was German scientist Johann Christian Rael, who was the man to first use the term psychiatry. He appears to have been the first to find and describe what he called an insula, Latin for island, in the brain that is now sometimes called the Island of Rael. But of course, when I cut things up, I'm just a monster. This artist's depiction is missing the opercula so that we can see into where the island lays. Historically, little has been known or understood about it. However, since the 1990s, scientists have begun to discover quite a few interesting tidbits about this region. And boy, have they found a lot. To quote one of my sources, depending on whom you ask, it is involved in pain, love, emotion, craving, addiction, the enjoyment of music, or even the tasting of wine. In my research, I found the following. One, a video from a neurologist and clinical psychologist who talked about how the island of Rael was an important part of pro proprioception, the ability to know or feel where parts of our body are without seeing them. The same video talked about how important it is to interoception, the feelings we have from inside our body and how that is intricately leaked to emotions. Two, a video from a professor of psychological sciences which discussed eating cockroaches as a way to illustrate how the island helps to learn what is safe and what is not, and why those perceptions can vary from culture to culture. Three, a published paper discussing addiction and how the island of Rael takes a prominent role in addictive behaviors and decision making. Four, a published paper discussing how stimulating the region can lead to seizures. Five, a paper suggesting a role in the island of Rail in mystical and religious experiences, particularly those where people feel intense peace, bliss, or even altered passages of time. I could go on and on, but most of it is a, a little over my head anyway. Heck, I know it's just Wikipedia, but check out this table of contents. It is possible that this region is involved in so many different things because at its root, and I'm quoting here, 
It facilitates our concepts of self-awareness. According to a hypothesis by neuroscientist Antonio Damasio, our bodies have physical feelings associated with emotions and experiences, and the brain may use those in large part to inform its decision making. It may be that the island of Rael is instrumental in interfacing physical sensations with mental processes. And if you understood that last sentence, please explain it to me in the comments. All right, so those are all the candidates. Please make your guesses now, and if you happen to put it in a comment down below, that only helps me out with the algorithm. All right, so let's reveal the answers. The first one, Frankenstein. That one was a fabrication. A lot of what I said about the book is true. However, there is no island of Riel anywhere in the novel. In point of fact, Robert Walton is trying to get to the North Pole and his boat gets stuck in the ice, and that's where he meets Victor. For the second one, the German dessert cake. That one is completely false. I just made that up. It sounded interesting to me. And I will say, it's not as disgusting as you might think. That leaves just the third one, the region of the brain. That one is true. Uh, it is most commonly known as the insula or insular cortex, but the island of Riel is a proper term for it, and it is the one that I first heard, and it is definitely the most interesting sounding one. Uh, I will leave a whole lot of links and comments about that in the bottom if you want to learn more. But other than that, we are done here. I hope you did well. Please let me know what you thought down below, and I'll see you next time.